This lowers your blood sugar faster than anything I have ever seen. And I'm not talking about extreme diets, starvation, or dangerous fats. These are science-backed strategies that improve insulin sensitivity, lower A1C, lower fasting blood sugar, and help you reclaim control over your blood sugar levels fast. So if you're getting crazy spikes after meals, or if your A1C is creeping up after each checkup, you wake up with fasting blood sugar values that make your heart drop, or you just feel tired, frustrated, or stuck, then this video is for you. Let's dive into seven research-backed ways to lower blood sugar levels fast, starting with the one that works instantly. Number one, High intensity interval training, also known as HIT. You've probably heard me talk about resistance training and cardiovascular training for blood sugar improvement. Those are fantastic, so keep doing them. But when it comes to slashing blood sugar levels quick, nothing comes close to HIT. Short bursts of intense movement, like body weight squats, cycling real fast, or stair sprints. Those type of intense movements dramatically increase glucose uptake by your muscles. A 2024 meta-analysis of 22 randomized controlled trials found that HIT reduced A1C, lowered fasting blood sugar levels, triglycerides, and LDL, your bad cholesterol, while boosting HDL, which is known as your good cholesterol, with specially strong results in people under 60 years of age and within five years of diagnosis. Mind you, the results were seen by most subjects, but those under 60 and recently diagnosed likely saw better results because their bodies are more responsive. They still make insulin, they have less long-term damage, and their bodies can bounce back faster with the right changes. But it doesn't matter if you've been living with diabetes for a long time. Hit can still work for you, and here's why. The mechanism of action that drops your blood sugar quickly is pretty fascinating. Your muscles need energy in the form of glucose whenever they are activated, whenever you move. But when you perform intense movements, this stored glucose runs out very quickly. This makes your muscles become glucose-hungry vacuums, pulling sugar out of your bloodstream really quick to refuel. And here's how you can apply this in real life. HIT can be done three to four times per week for a cumulative time of 20 to 30 minutes maximum. So that's less than 10 minutes per workout. For example, you will be doing 30 seconds of intense effort. You can do jump squats or spinning in a bike real quick, or you can use the assault bike. Or if you have none of those, just do jumping jacks, followed by one minute of rest. Then you simply repeat that for five to seven rounds. This triggers a 24 to 48 hour increase in insulin sensitivity, which basically makes your muscles uptake more glucose from the bloodstream at any given time. This works very fast and it builds momentum. Number two, apple cider vinegar before meals. This one is surprisingly simple and powerful, but it comes with some caveats. Just one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar diluted on eight ounces of water before meals can lower your post-meal blood sugar spike by up to 20 to 34% according to some studies. So what is the mechanism of action here or is it magic? Well, apple cider vinegar contains something known as acetic acid, which slows down stomach emptying and it boosts your muscles' ability to absorb glucose. This is what basically reduces the blood sugar spike after you eat. Blood sugar enters the bloodstream at a much slower rate, and your muscles absorb it at a much higher rate. But there's something important to consider. While apple cider vinegar is effective, long-term daily use can wear down the enamel in your teeth, and it can also irritate the lining of the esophagus. This happened to me after using it just once, even if I diluted it in water, that burning sensation lasted all day. Some people tolerate it better, but I wouldn't recommend it for long-term use. It's a hack that works, but I think that the next tip is a better option for you. Number three, berberine with magnesium glycinate. 
Let's talk about how to take supplements the right way. Berberine has been shown in over 50 randomized controlled trials to lower A1C, lower fasting blood sugar levels, improve insulin resistance, and support better lipid values. It's actually often referred as nature's metformin. For those of you that don't know, metformin is a pharmaceutical drug that is used to lower blood sugar levels. And berberine is a natural compound that comes from a plant. So what is the mechanism of action that makes berberine so effective at lowering blood sugar levels? Well, it activates something known as the AMPK pathway, your cell's internal energy regulator, turning on fat burning and improving glucose uptake. That's an oversimplification, but I won't go into it in this video. If you want to know everything about berberine, I have linked a video above my head. Now, if you're interested in taking berberine, you must know that you gotta take at least 1,000 milligrams of active compounds per day. We actually recommend 600 milligrams in the morning with food and 600 milligrams in the evening with food for around the clock coverage. I'll go ahead and link a great option for you below this video. You'll also find a discount code if you decide to take it. Now, here's the kicker. Many people living with high blood sugar problems are also deficient in magnesium. And magnesium is crucial for insulin signaling. So you can see the big problem here. Studies estimate that between 14 to 48% of people living with type 2 diabetes are magnesium deficient. I know that that is a wide range, but that is what the available data shows. However, here's what matters the most. Low magnesium equals poor glucose control, poor insulin sensitivity, and increased insulin resistance. That's why we recommend pairing your berberine with magnesium glycinate, 275 milligrams taken before bed. I'll go ahead and link the Jade Supplements Magnesium Glycinate below this video. It's gentle on the stomach, highly bioavailable, and it helps you support healthy blood sugar levels. Number four, post-meal walks, also known as the 15-minute fix. The moment you finish a meal, walk. Don't even think about it. It's not a marathon, it's not a hike, it's not even brisk walking. It's just 15 to 20 minutes of casual walking. So why do I recommend this so much? Number one reason is because your muscles don't need insulin to uptake glucose during movement. The mechanism is known as contraction-mediated glucose uptake, and it works like flipping on a vacuum to suck sugar out of your bloodstream. As a matter of fact, a 2017 randomized crossover trial found that walking after meals for 15 minutes, that is after breakfast, after lunch, and after dinner, was more effective at lowering post-meal blood sugar levels than walking for 45 minutes once a day. This is so simple and so accessible, yet it's one of the most overlooked hacks. Here's a pro tip for you. If you cannot walk after breakfast, lunch, and dinner, pick at least four days of the week in which you're gonna do it twice per day. And on the days that you cannot even do it twice a day, just do it once, but pick the largest meal of the day. This works and it compounds over time. So stay consistent. Number five, fasting and fasting mimicking diets. Nothing drops blood sugar like a break from eating but it has to be done right. I'm not talking about starving yourself. I'm talking about either time-restricted eating, like the 16-8 fasting, or periodic fasting mimicking diets, also known as FMD, which can trick your body into a fasted state while still feeding it nutrients. With a 16-8 approach, you basically don't eat for 16 hours out of the day, just water. And then you have an eight-hour window to eat. For example, you stop eating at 7 p.m. and then you start eating again at 11 a.m. the next day. This is doable for most people. Now, with FMD, you can actually eat some nutrients throughout the day that trick your body into a fasted state. The research behind this is fascinating. I learned about this by reading a book by Dr. Walter Longo known as The Longevity Diet. And the research shows that FMDs when done five days out of the month, can improve insulin sensitivity, lower fasting blood sugar, reduce belly fat, and drop A1C levels within weeks. Your body basically shifts from storing energy to burning energy, tapping into fat reserves 
and restoring cellular function. I have personally done both types of fasting with great results in my insulin sensitivity. I'll put a link below this video to the FMD protocol that I followed. It's known as the l Nutra Health Metabolic Health Program. All right, number six, resistance training. This is what I call the glucose vacuum upgrade. Walking is great, hit is awesome, but do you know what makes those work even better? Actually having enough muscle mass to suck up all of that circulating blood sugar. So resistance training is essential to supercharge that effect. Muscle is like your glucose reservoir. The more lean muscle mass that you have, the more glucose that your body can store in the right places and away from circulating blood sugar. So here's a quick analogy for you. Walking turns on the glucose vacuum, but resistance training upgrades your vacuum, making it bigger and more powerful. Start with three to four sessions per week. Each session should be 30 to 40 minutes long. Focus on full body movements like squats, rows, lunges, and presses. You don't even need to go to the gym. You can use resistance bands or your own body weight. Every workout builds strength, improves insulin sensitivity, and helps you manage blood sugar even when you're not exercising. I'll leave a link below this video with a free exercise routine that I made for you. And last but not least, number seven, sleep and stress the hidden drivers of high blood sugar levels. You can do everything right with food, movement, and supplementation to increase insulin sensitivity. But if you're not sleeping well or you're constantly stressed, your blood sugar levels won't cooperate. So yes, sleeping better tonight can significantly improve your blood sugar levels tomorrow. One, just one poor night of sleep can reduce your insulin sensitivity by up to 25% the next day. The subjects in this study slept for about four hours instead of the recommended eight hours per night. This reduction led to a significant decrease in insulin sensitivity. So yes, it's a pretty large problem if you're not getting enough consistent sleep. And then we have stress, which triggers the release of cortisol. And cortisol is a hormone that makes your liver dump glucose into the bloodstream. If your stress levels are constantly high, then cortisol levels are likely high as well, which won't let your blood sugar levels come down. Well, I'll tell you what I do because I have been trying to perfect my sleep over the last few years. And I have narrowed it down to a couple things that actually work. There are three main things. Number one, definitely magnesium glycinate one hour before bed. This is the only dose that you need throughout the day. 275 milligrams to be exact. The one that I take is linked below this video. Magnesium helps your muscles relax. It quiets racing thoughts, and it sets the stage for deeper, more restorative sleep, which now you know it's crucial for insulin sensitivity. Number two, an ashwagandha supplement to regulate cortisol. I also take this one one hour before bed, and it has done wonders for my sleep and stress levels. Now I wake up refreshed, and I only take 655 milligrams with black pepper, which enhances absorption. The one that I take is also linked below this video. And number three, breath work. This one absolutely helps. It drops my heart rate, which I measure with my whoop every night, and it gets me into a relaxed state that promotes deeper, more restorative sleep. Don't overthink it. Just breathe deeply for five minutes while you're laying in bed before you close your eyes. I used to overthink it and looked up meditation videos, guided breath work, but the only thing that kept me consistent is just to breathe deeply for five minutes before going to sleep. So to recap, here are the seven fastest ways to lower your blood sugar levels. Number one, high intensity interval training, quick and dirty, short bursts of intense movement. Number two, apple cider vinegar before meals, one tablespoon in eight ounces of water, but I wouldn't recommend it long term. Number three, berberine and magnesium glycinate. For berberine, 600 milligrams in the morning with food and 600 milligrams in the evening with food. Magnesium, 275 milligrams, one hour before bed. Number four, post-meal walks. 
eat, then walk. 15 to 20 minute casual walking. That's it. Number five, fasting and FMD. For fasting, don't eat for 16 hours and eat during an eight hour window. That's it. For FMD, you can follow a five day FMD protocol. Number six, resistance training. This is a way to upgrade your blood sugar vacuum. Do it. And number seven, increase quality sleep and reduce stress. The way that I do this is again, magnesium glycinate one hour before bed with ashwagandha and breath work for five minutes before closing my eyes. These aren't just hacks, they are metabolic power tools. Just pick two to three to start this week. You'll feel the difference and your labs will show it too. Check the description below this video for the supplement links, the free guides, and the workout that I promised you. And if this video helped you, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and let me know in the comments below which topic would you like me to cover next. You've got this. See you in the next video. Take care.